All right, here we are back again, ready to do another Uncle Ken Guarantee Fly. This one here, a bunch of you fellers are out there to fishing them pike and musking and pickerel and such and come up with sissy flies looking like this. See them eyes? They don't look real. But anyway, a lot of fellers will start just throwing stuff on a hook like this and it don't even matter to them what you put on there. But we got a fly here that is very thought out. It's going to catch you a fish almost every cast. Not like this junk. First of all, we got us a good hook. Again, the point's buried in there. You can't even see it. Instead of that sissy thread, we're going to use some man thread right here. Some stealth braid. Okay? Fish can't even see it. All right? So on this and here, we're going to use a little different technique. We're, we're going to just take and tie it in with our fingers. Some of you boys that are pretty boys might not want to do this because it's going to hurt your fingers because it's tough stuff. Let me good scissors go. You just nip that off. See? Cut co. Cut it every time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to put on a, a curly tail on this in here. And I, I've got me a pair of Wranglers I'd have for 30 years or so. And then we finally had to retire them. And they got a good scent to them. So what I've done is I've cut a curly tail out of the piece of Wrangler. And that's going to hang off the back of our fly. And you see how little that other fly was that I had is only about 10 inches long. This one's about 16. All right. So let's just tie that in the end right here. Nice and tight. See that? I'd cut my fingers off if I tried to tighten that down as hard as I could. But we'll just uh, wrap her on there. Nice and tight. Now that's pretty much going to be the whole back of our fly, but we don't want people seeing where we tied in this thread right here. So what we done is we harvested, uh, well, we killed it. That's what we done. We trapped it and killed it. It was a skunk, so we're going to tie it in right there. Just like that. It ain't going nowhere. Oh, man. Tied and tied. See? Now, they'll never know that them Wranglers, all right? They'll be so be looking at that skunk right up here. Okay? What we're going to do now is... Oh, I need to trim it up a little bit. All right. Now we're going to tie it in our... Uh, our Art of our joint intersection right here for our fly. Now, some of them fellers are using uh, wire, but they're using way too little of wire. We're going to double reinforce this one right here. So, I got myself some galvanized baling wire. We're just going to put it up through that hook. There we are. Kind of hard to work with, but when you catch them pickerel like I do, they are not fun to mess with. So there we go. Now to get that right to the right shape, I'm going to come in here with this extra strong tool. And I'm just going to crimp it down. Now look at that. That's a good vise. Tie it in here like this. Again, don't use your good scissors to be cutting wire and such. So what I'm going to come in here and do... This in here is going to do the light work for us. All right. Oh, damn it. Sharon Jean, you clipping your toenails again? All right. Nice and easy does it. See how clean that is right there? Fish won't even be able to tell that's wire. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some weed eater string. My boy Raymond, he likes to get this yellow stuff because he's kind of a fruity feather. And we'll just tie that in here with our super braid. Oh, man. Oh, there we go. Just get it in there all nice and good. We're just going to finish this one off here with just a little bit of super glue. Just like that. Yeah. 
to hide that super glue we're just going to take some of this uh, fur I don't know what it is and just kind of put it on there like that just don't get it on your fingers you know Time long as I have, you can learn not to get it on your fingers, it, it'll stick to them. All right, there's the back half of the fly. Let's get done with the first half now. All right, as you can see, we've had to change out our vise a little bit to, to get this big old hook in here. Now, safety first, as you all should know, we see a big old point right here. What I want to do is I'm going to take one of these earplugs I got from my truck, and I'm just going to put it on that hook right there see that don't hurt that way if your kids come in here while your time flies and they decide to put their finger right here it, it ain't gonna hurt them again we're gonna tie in our spider wire right up right here a little bit more We're going to trim her off nice and tight. Now, the most important part of this fly is to get the two joints to put get put together. Now, we don't want them that close. We want them about like that right there. Now, you can see how long this tail is. It's it's really long. So, another, another key point of this fly right here is you see how big this front hook is and how small this back one is. You don't want the fish to see in this, in this hook right here. Okay, because they won't bite if they know they're two hooks. They're used to seeing one hook, they see two hooks, adios. All right. We're going to advance our spider wire all the way to the back. See how nice and clean and even that is right there. Takes a lot of years of practice to get to where you can do that. And I'll just uh, tie her in like that. We'll just get her bound down. Yep, we're looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to nip that off again with my uh, fancy wire cutters. Take some skill to use these because if you don't do it right, you'll just cut the hook right off. Got some of these on my fishing vest too for trimming one off tip it and such. Oh, man. Oh. So, as you can see, it's a pretty quick process. Oh. Why well, won't that cut through there? One nail stuck in there. Anyway, you get the point. All right, we're tied off. Give your hook a little wiggle to get it straight again. That other vise kept her rotating on me. All this one does is it makes the hook go like this, so I can fix that no problem. Okay, now, a lot of these uh, fancy fellers, these fly tire fly fishermen, they'll just tie a fly like that, and it's got a bunch of super glue. It's got my man sweat on it. And it ain't, it ain't going to smell very good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the Uncle Ken secret. I've done this on my other flies too, but I just didn't want it in the video. But uh, we take some creamy sauce, otherwise known as peanut butter. We'll just put that on there. And it's going to soak in right here at the back of the fly. And it ain't going to show through so the game warden comes up unless he's got a, a good hound dog and can sniff him out some peanut butter he ain't gonna know that you're fishing bait so we'll we'll get it nice and on there maybe a little bit back here that super glue will bind it right down there we are now to activate the enzymes in this here peanut butter we're going to take some uv light and shine it on there now look how how good the uv qualities are on that you know look at it now not very bright sunlight boom lavender all right keep that in your mind put it on your woolly bugs next time all right i was out in the garden today and i found a, a product that i just know is going to work i really haven't worked with this too much but i can almost give it an uncle king guarantee it's one of these uh, pixie wheels see how bright and shiny that is you don't even need the uv light to see how good that is so i'm going to cut some of this material off and i'm going to attach it on there 
Purple side facing up. That's really important. I don't know how good the blue one would work, but purple side facing up is how we're going to want to do this right here. So see how that does? It's going to keep this back section fly real nice and rigid while the tail just wiggles all around. Alrighty. Alright, the next part of this is, is really important, okay? You need to pay attention really nice and, and uh, open up your ears on this one because what we've got here is a mystical creature that the fish have seen before. Now, as you might see here, we've got some beautiful hair, perfect for tying musky flies. And, you know, when your kids grow up and, and uh, they break the tails off of these things, they don't want to play with them no more. So I got a collection of these things in here and I'm just going to nip off some of this hair and I'm going to attach it to the fly in various different parts and you're going to see how nice and flowy it looks. Alright, now the next part, we got some of this uh, mystical sea creature hair to cut off and what I'm going to do is just like a nylon rope, you want to singe the edges real good, you know, get them all bound together, you know, so it'll stick nice and tight. There we go. Tie that in right there, and that's going to swim like you wouldn't believe. So we're just going to create a layering effect with this. So I'm just going to kind of go a little bit further for forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up forward like this, and maybe cut us a little bit more skunk. Very important where you place these things. See, my hook goes down, push it right back up. No problem. Okay. So we're looking really good right now. We could fish it right now and the fish would eat it. Okay. I'm going to cut a little bit more of that uh, sea creature hair off. If you get the lavender, uh, uh, what, uh, lavender mermaid barbie. It works better. I think there's a pink one too, and we tried it and it sucked. Only thing we caught on that was walleye. Walleye meat tastes like the butthole off a skunk. All right, we're just going to finish it up here. All I'm going to do is tie in another hank of this uh, sea creature hair. Before I get too far into it, I got to put some more uh, scent. Usually when I got peanut butter at the desk, my dog's sitting under the desk just waiting to, for some to fall on the ground. So if you got a dog, it'll help you clean it up. Then what we done, we took some of this uh, this here uh, weed eater wire. And I ain't going to do the whole thing because it's quite a process, but I just burned the ends of the monofilament or the, the weed eater wire like that. I made two perfectly circular eyes. I'm just going to tie them in wacky hackle style just like that we are almost complete just like any good fly it ain't done until we put some wild shine on it now try not to get your brush down in that peanut butter because that peanut butter if you go if you put it back in the bottle of the wild shine it'll mess it all up you all the oils from the peanut butter really wreak havoc with it put some like that <coughs> oh man, I've been sick lately. See, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bunch of this cement right in this eye of the hook because you don't want a lot of room. You just want to poke a hole in there enough to get your line through, and that way it won't be rubbing around. So make sure that's nice and tight. Put some back here, you know. All right, last thing we're going to do to finish this one off, uh, the Cooter Special, is uh, I seen this on a, on a fancy internet video a little while ago. I'm not sure why he done it, but I started doing it on my musky flies, and it sure has helped. But I basically take a uh, hair dryer. It's really important. It's a Remington brand, and it's purple and black. What I want to do is I'm going to set it to about as hot as it'll go, hot as a firecracker, and I'm just going to blow the fly. It'll also... It'll also show you how, how the curly tail wiggles if you blow it on there. So just make sure you get it all up and down. Alright, 
we're done. It also helps that, uh, that peanut butter get up in the fly and, and really soak in. Anyway, we appreciate your viewership. Uh, another Uncle Ken guarantee. Go get you some pike, pickerel, walleye, bluegill, trout, anything in the world is going to catch. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.